So you gather all this information, you watch all these videos, you read all these articles, but you're going to forget it. And, God forbid, should something happen to you, who else is going to carry on all that knowledge? Today we're talking about why you should have some kind of prepper notebook. And I'm going to explain mine to you when we come back. All right, so I'm going to start off the video by letting you know these are my prepper notebooks. Now, I do this a little differently. Um, you can go out and you can buy a notebook and you can write in it, write all your information down, and that's great. That's really, really handy. Uh, the problem is, is if you have sloppy handwriting or if your handwriting looks like some kind of Egyptian hieroglyphics, hello, that's me, <laughs> um, you definitely want to have it printed out. So what I've done is, along with various articles and personal information like combinations to safes uh maybe you know how to start up a solar generator how to fire up the generator how to run our solar system here in the house should the power go out i won't let information in that binder that binder is a cert binder that i got when i took my cert class and i've added stuff to it over time but this one is my main prepper notebook and what i do is i type it all out it's faster for me to type it than write it and i have a three ring hole punch and i just punch the stuff through and put it in my notebook and we'll take a look at it in a little bit but today we're going to talk about five reasons you should own a prepper notebook and what you should put in it now we as preppers we value information we read articles we learn we practice skills all this stuff but all that information you gather is pretty useful but where do you store it now you can gather so much information that if you don't keep it safe somewhere you'll forget it so it's important to have one central location where you record all your preparedness plans thoughts and checklists a prepper journal or a prepper notebook is something you should add to your preps immediately. Um, definitely get started on this. Um, I used to tell people start two lists by your preps, wherever your preps are located, be it in a closet or whatever, an inspirational and an aspirational list. Inspirational is, hey, get more food, get more water, I need this, I need that, and you cross these things off as you do them. An aspirational list is something you aspire to, like grow a garden, um, learn, how, learn CPR, you know, learn another skill, purchase something that's maybe expensive that you're saving for that's more of an aspirational list but a prepper journal is kind of different now before we go into why you should have one we have to talk about what should be in this the first thing to remember is it's not an emergency binder and most of my emergency binders have kind of gone all digital on secured usb cards on secured usb little dongles but uh, that usually would have copies of your birth certificates, social security cards, your latest bank statements, medical records, your home mortgage, insurance, all that stuff, maybe a copy of your IDs. Um, you would put that on either a digital format that is very secure, because remember, somebody could reach to wherever you have that hidden and take it with them and they have all your information. Or, yeah, you could write it down, you could make copies, and you could do it in a paper format. I choose to use, my, use mine, um, put mine on there digitally and encrypt it. That way, nobody can do much with it unless they know the password so we're going to talk about what should go in there it's basically a journal or a list of ideas where you keep all your preparedness plans checklists procedures and specific skills that you want you want to make sure you know let's face it all the times we watch youtube videos if somebody were to say hey remember that video you watched 12 years ago on fire starting with nothing fancy i'd be like huh no <laughs> so if you saw a skill or technique in there that you really liked write it down Put it in your journal. If you, it makes you more comfortable to type it out and put it in a paper binder like I do, by all means do it. Because remember, during a disaster, more than likely, either your power or the internet is not going to be there. So let's talk about some things you should put in there. Let's say your plans for bugging in. Um, well, how do you run your backup power system? You know, you may not be home. You may be stuck at work and your spouse may be home. Your kids may be home. You know, it's a lot easier to text them and say, hey, up on dad's shelf is that black notebook. Pull it down and it will teach you how to start the generator. All right. Your plans for bugging out your routes, where you're going to go. Your bug out bad contents. Okay. A checklist. So when you do rotate it, you go through there and maybe you say, oh, you know what? My food was bad. I got to get more food. You go out there and get it. You have it already. Okay. Coordinates to caches. Uh, maybe pictures and information on the most common plants that can be foraged in your area. Frequencies for first responders or ham radio or maybe your own personal ham radio repeaters that you use in your town. Uh, recipes for cooking and food storage. Medical information for family members. Uh, things like, you know, my son's allergic to penicillin. Uh, I can't take this. I'm on this medication, whatever. Okay. 
Uh, maybe a list of credit card accounts, bank account numbers. Um, your login and password information, you can do that if you feel comfortable with it. Personally, I feel passwords should be something that sticks in your head and you know it and you don't lose it. But if you feel comfortable with that, you could do that. Uh, you could do a uh, local resource list. I did that with a survival group I was involved with years ago where we all made up a list of what's around us. You know, and when I say local resources, I'm talking about, okay, your grocery store is closed. Where can you go and get some bread? Well, the gas station here has a little concession that comes in and gives them fresh bread every week. So I know I can buy bread at the grocery store. That's a resource. Where can I go to get propane if my main place is down? You know, that's another local resource. So a resource list. And that's really just a sampling, okay? So why? We've done the what should go in, but what about the why? All right? Well, because you have one central location for all your preparedness plans. In an emergency, you might have some great plans, but if they're not written down and they're not in your head, you're going to forget them, okay? Sometimes the idea that we have in our head are a lot easier to implement, um, but when you put them down on paper, you seem to remember them a little bit more, okay? Also, too, sometimes some of our plans are absolutely seem brilliant to us. Then you start writing them down on paper and go, wait a minute, that's not going to work. Things like that, you know, it gives you time to think about it. It also makes sure that you have them, okay? And you can also ask a trusted family member or a group member to look over them and make sure they make sense to them, too. Second reason, you don't want to forget any important information. That's the biggest thing. When I come across an article or a post or a blog post, even to this day, I will print it out and I'll put it in that binder. And I have another one in there too. I just didn't bother to bring it out because this one's more of my articles and personal information. And the other one is more of other stuff that I have. Okay, again, you got a cash. Let's say the worst happens. You get killed. You don't come home that day. Well, now your family has caches buried around that they don't even know where they are. You might want to put the coordinates in there and say, hey, if something happens to me, take your GPS out and go get these coordinates and find out where this stuff is. All right. Number three, you can easily revisit and review your plans. Bug out plans. Great for that. You know, we're going to go to grandpa's cabin up north. And here's the four ways we have to get there. And you can review that. You can go in there and say, oh, you know what? That third way got closed down the other year because the rock slide or mud slide hit it and they didn't bother to open it again. Let's revise that plan. And you have a record. You can keep it all down there, okay? It gives you a place where all your plans are in place and you can review them as fast as every 15 minutes, every few months, and it will keep your plans fresh in your mind and allow you to recognize what needs to be adjusted. A good example of this, okay? I review a lot of products, some I keep. Sometimes I'll put them in my storeroom and pull them out and be like, wait a minute, how do I turn this on? Because I'm not checking them every day. They're extras or something like that. So having a prep list or a resource list in there with instructions on, you know, while it's fresh in your mind, how to turn on this solar generator, how to turn, how to put out these panels, how to line them up with the sun, how to cook this food, how to start this stove, you know, this backup stove, really handy. Okay, number five, and this is the most important one of all, like we were talking about, your family will know what to do when you're not around. Okay, if something happens and you're not home. Or in the worst case scenario, you don't make it. Your family will know what to do. You know, your wife, your cousin, whatever, if they're there nearby, they can say, you know what? George used to keep a prepper notebook. Let's go dig that thing out and see how we can start this generator. And there you go. You've saved them a whole lot of aggravation. So I tell people not to skimp on this. It's an important resource. You should invest in a quality uh, a journal, a quality notebook. If you're going to write your plans down, what I did, and I'll show you this in a minute, is I have a three ring binder. Okay, you can find them all over the place and pretty easy to uh, find the journals in Walmart, you know, those little journals like that that you can write stuff down on. You don't have to spend a fortune, but don't get junk. So the conclusion is, if you take time to make a prepper notebook, you're saying you care about your preparedness plans enough to write them down, okay? You're creating a valuable resource should your plans need to be accessed and reviewed. You're also making sure that you don't forget any important details during a disaster. Let's face it, all hell's breaking loose. You're going to forget a few things. Lord knows I have. <laughs> so it gives you a way to have that set up and might be something that you'd pass down in your family. Really quickly, I want to show you what's inside of one of mine. I don't have both of them out here, but I want to show you what's inside of one of mine and give you an idea what you'd put in Now, there. what I've done as far as write down my own stuff too, because I have all this stuff I wrote down um, for CPR and stuff. And like I say, you know, it's not too bad, but you can see my handwriting can be kind of confusing at times, especially when I'm taking notes in a class. And that was for a uh, 
AED and uh, CPR class. I have this broken down in sections, like my food area here. And here's a good example of one month of storage food type of things, okay? Water storage, how to filter it, okay? Um, things that I, this was something I came across and I just kind of wrote it all out, how to purify it in wilderness areas, things like that, okay? Here's an article, uh, if you guys know the Rubicon, um, they have a lot of good survival articles to print out and a lot of different things on electronics weapons manuals now granted when i started this i was a little heavy into weapons as you can tell it's quite a thick little section but hey you know what that's cool that's you know a good resource to have uh let's move on to down here all right okay this is what is this how to camp how to make sure that you're not seen at night building a fire bed um all this stuff okay how to help people get prepared using potassium iodide in a nuclear react incident. All this neat stuff in here. This is my whole nuclear preps section. Written down. Some of it I've written. Some of it I've copied from the web and just stored for my own emergency use. And it will remind me of all these things when I go through. So, in short, make yourself a prepper binder, a prepper journal, a prepper notebook. When you're new, you're not going to have as much as I have in here. You might be like, oh, wow, I learned how to do a fire today. I learned how to the correct way to use a ferro rod. And that will go in your prepper journal. Anyway, folks, I thank you for hanging out today and watching the video. Don't forget to check out our links down below. We have our freeze-dried wholesalers link, our Amazon affiliate store. Now, that freeze-dried wholesaler link will save you 15% just for the link. And up until Saturday, it's 20% if you buy a breakfast item. So definitely check that out. Our My Patriot Supply link, that's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. We have an awesome deal on a three-month kit going on right now over there, $200 off. And, of course, our Thrive Life Freeze-Dried Food Store. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.